Chase, do you see apple? Uh, do you see apple? Sure. Uh, apple, yeah. And juice. Juice and juice. Apple and juice, yeah. Do you look? That's a frog. Do you look? Frog. Do you look? Tractor. Do you look? Uh, that is a leaf and lettuce. Do you look? Leaf. Do you look? That's a leaf. Yeah. All right, yeah. should we go to the next one? <gasps> Do you see a bath? Choo-choo. Choo-choo. That's a choo-choo. Choo-choo. That's a choo-choo. Choo-choo. Yeah, what about baby? Baby. No, that's a choo-choo. Choo-choo. Baby. That's a baby, yeah. Oh. Those are buttons. An O. That's an O. Yeah. Okay, where's where's the O? Show me the O. Where's the O? Where's the O? Where's O? O. Oh, yeah. There's an O. And a choo choo, yeah. Choo choo. All right, let's try this one. Oh my gosh, do you know anything on this one? Trike. Tricycle. That's a tricycle. Shoes? Shoes. She has shoes, yes. Sock. That's right. That's a sock. That's a hat. That's a hat. Night night. That's a lamp for night night. Wow. Good job. Yay. Yay, Chase. You are so good. Hey awesome mamas, welcome back. I am Jamie Lynn and I am so happy that you are joining me today on my channel. We are actually going to be discussing Einstein syndrome today among various other speech delays in toddlers and characteristics that qualify your toddler as having these special speech development problems. If this is your first time here, welcome. I'm so happy that you stumbled upon my channel. My name is Jamie Lynn and we are the Wilson family. We discuss living a healthy lifestyle, especially with members of our family having heart disease. And we try to live the fullest and happiest lives possible. So I hope that you guys join us for our journey. We do lots of healthy recipes, smoothies, juices. I eat a plant-based diet. And for the most part, we try to do healthy activities for a family as well. If you are an awesome freaking badass mama, go ahead and hit that like button. Don't be shy, subscribe and join our community because we love having everybody here. I am definitely making some goals this year. I missed my subscriber count goal last year and so I'm trying to knock this one out of the park this year so it would be so awesome if you would join and stay a while. Before I get too far into anything else, I just want to say if you guys want free samples of Cobrita, they'll send you their goat milk porridge with apples and cinnamon. They will send you their formula and they will send you some snack puffs in a box. It's free. You're not signing up for anything. You're not entering, you know, credit card information or anything like that. You do have to cover a small shipping charge, but for the amount of goods that you're going to get along with coupons, it's definitely worth it. So check out that link in the description and thank you Cabrita for also being so for always being so amazing because my kids love your formula and they're super flipping picky eaters and they haven't liked some of the other competitors that I've tried I'm just gonna say that I want to give you guys some examples of speech delays and toddlers especially Einstein syndrome because it's got a lot of mystery around it. Not a lot is known about Einstein syndrome. And for the most part, it's because a lot of the intense studies that are necessary haven't actually been conducted yet. I'm going to be putting a link in the description to Global Teletherapy, which is where I've been getting most of the information on Einstein syndrome. It is something that hasn't been researched and documented as much as some people would like it to be. So I'm going to outline a lot of the characteristics that would make up um, a child actually having Einstein syndrome. However, I do need you guys to know that I am not a medical professional. I am not a speech therapist. 
I actually work in the IT industry, so me and speech therapy, we have nothing to do with each other at all. Please seek professional help. If you guys had a child who is having issues speaking, um, what I did, and this is what is advised, at least in the United States of America, is to go to your pediatrician and bring up your concerns. That's what I did. And then you will get a referral. They will refer you to the correct um, development place. If you guys are familiar with Albert Einstein, I sure hope you are. If you're an individual who has been educated in any format whatsoever, you obviously know that he is a very brilliant and influential scientist. He actually himself had a very substantial speech delay. He didn't start speaking full sentences until he was almost five years old. So this is where this term Einstein syndrome came from. It was actually an American economist, Thomas Sowell, actually wrote a book about this because he was really blown away by Einstein having this incredible speech delay and yet not actually having something like autism. So in 1997, Thomas Sowell wrote a book called Late Talking Children, and I will put a link to that in the description if you guys are interested in reading that. Obviously, he has researched speech and development in toddlers very much. So he wrote an entire book about it. So if you guys are interested in reading that, a lot of the information that I'll be giving you to date actually comes from his book, which was adapted into this little blog post by Global Teletherapy. So I hope that maybe that inspires you to pick it up and check it out yourself if you are, you know, questioning the abilities of your toddler. So I'm going to define for you below the characteristics of having Einstein syndrome. The very first one is an outstanding and precocious analytical or musical abilities. So if your child is really good with puzzles or really able to like analyze or break things down or do something very intricate at a very young age or has a very advanced ear for music or maybe they can even play with some of their baby toys or something that would produce music at a very young age, that is one of the symptoms of having this. Next is outstanding memory. A lot of these things that I'm going to be talking about today, maybe they aren't things that you're gonna be able to tell when your kid is like two years old. You might need them to be four or five, and for the most part, it's kind of too late to really figure, you know, by then they're probably talking. It's not really a big deal anymore. Strong-willed behaviors. Um, yeah, I could say so much on this topic, and I'm sure a lot of you guys could too. If you're on this channel right now and you just stopped and thought, strong-willed behavior, no shit. Um, I feel you, mama. Hit that like button. I got you, girl. Um, very selective interest. This is also something that there is definitely a blend between the realm of autism and the realm of Einstein syndrome, so it's very easy to confuse the two. So maybe your child received a diagnosis for autism and maybe you think they actually have Einstein syndrome. I do see a lot in a lot of this research that I have done that says if, you know, it's a mama knows best thing. If your child received a diagnosis that you do not agree with, feel free to challenge that. Go to a different doctor, get a different evaluation and just go from there. You know what I mean? It's totally okay. Look, honestly, I really, really feel that that mama knows best. If you know that the diagnosis that you, that you received for your child is not correct, go ahead and challenge that. Delayed potty training. We are definitely struggling with getting Chase on the potty right now. So if you guys are also experiencing that, that is a characteristic of Einstein syndrome. Specific ability to read or use numbers or a computer. So this one, obviously, I, I would believe that this one might, might be hard to tell at a very young age for your child. Chase is actually able to point out a couple of letters, which surprises me. His favorite letter, and he talks about it nonstop, is O, the letter O. He will find an O on every damn sign. Now, I don't know if that's really something special or if he just has some gravitation towards the letter O. I mean, his oldest sister's name is Una, so I mean, maybe he's just used to hearing O's a lot and he really gravitates towards that for some reason. But the fact that he could identify it when, you know, Brandon or myself have never actually shown him the alphabet and said this is each letter, but he is able to identify O's, um, which I don't know, I find to be very unique, um, but I don't know if necessarily that is what they're talking about with this characteristic. I would have to double check with my doctor or Chase's speech therapist. 
close relatives with analytical or musical careers. So this would be like if you were an analyst, a lot of these people, a lot of times these parents are engineers. Um, I did see a breakdown somewhere. I'm not sure what website I saw it on, but they did break down like kids that have Einstein syndrome and what their parents do for a living. I am an information technology analyst, so it is my goal to work at NASA or SpaceX. So you could put me in this um, characteristic probably for sure. Extreme concentration on whatever task it is that it is occupying their time. So I would say that at this point in time, I don't believe that Chase exhibits this at all. Um, he very much is scatterbrained. He moves rapidly from one thing to another. He always wants to do whatever myself or Brandon's doing, more so me. He likes doing whatever I'm doing. If I'm working on my computer and editing videos, he wants to sit beside me. He has his little um, fire tablet where he'll watch shows and pretend to be working alongside of me but I definitely do not see extreme concentration with him. I don't know. So anyway, those were the characteristics for Einstein syndrome. All right, guys, again, I have to reiterate that you need to have your child evaluated by a professional, by a doctor, by a speech therapist, by somebody in order to really help you identify and put your kid in the correct category. And therefore you will be able to get him the correct treatment for whatever issues he or she is having, okay? Now that we've actually talked about all this, I wanna to talk to you about getting an actual Einstein syndrome diagnosis. At this point in at least, the very least in America, it is not possible to get a diagnosis of Einstein syndrome. Your child would just be labeled as late onset speech or child apraxia of speech. And so therefore you cannot get a diagnosis specifically of Einstein syndrome. It is because this is this has no actual medical definition. It is it is not in the statistic manual of mental disorders. It has literally no accepted medical definition whatsoever. So therefore, your child would never actually receive a diagnosis from a doctor or any professional of having Einstein syndrome. So it's a bit of a myth. So obviously treatment, like I've been saying, we do have Chase on a waiting list for speech therapy. Once he gets into speech therapy, we really expect to see him making leaps and bounds. Um, Chase's brother Killian also was in speech therapy. All right, sweet mamas. Again, if you guys made it this far into the video, I'm so, so grateful that you are here today. I'm so happy that you came to my channel and I hope that this video helps you. And like I said, take this information, evaluate your child, and then get them to a professional who will also evaluate them and be able to get you into the correct area for the correct therapy that they will need in order to be able to acclimate themselves more. Um, obviously having Einstein syndrome or late child apraxia or late onset speech and child apraxia is really frustrating for a lot of toddlers not being able to convey what it is that they want. So I hope that you guys are able to get the therapy and help that you need like we are on the path to right now. Thank you again so much for watching. It makes my heart so happy and Bless you all, have a wonderful day, thank you.